Hello, this is Pick, and welcome to the final episode of my guide for FTB Neotech. We have very little left to do as far as progression is concerned, but that doesn't mean we can afford to sit idly by and wait for our factory to do things for us. So, between the end of last episode and right now, I have already gone ahead and done a lot of work speeding up my machines. Some of this involved machine chainers, they ended up causing a lot of lag, but I stuck with them anyway. If you can afford large hull costs, you are probably better off doing the old method of hooking up all of your machines via pipes individually, but that's water under the bridge at this point for me. Basically, what I did was greatly increase the rate at which I was making circuits, as well as some particular metals like aluminum and stainless steel you're going to want an extremely large amount of stainless steel going forward. Aluminum as well, and that isn't to neglect any of the other metals. So keep your infrastructure up, alright? The quantum machine hull is the final tier. This will allow any machine to accept the superconductor tier of energy. Superconductor wires can transport more power than you're ever going to be generating, though of course they're also very expensive. Our first stop today will be Singularities. You don't need a ton of them, only like 3 or 4, and uh, definitely not the like 45 to 50 I made in my first playthrough, because I didn't know that a particular recipe using them didn't actually consume the Singularity. Whoopsie doodle, as they say. To make Singularities, you're going to need a whole stack of nukes each. To make nukes, we need deuterium, tritium, processing units, and some other junk. Processing units are, of course, super expensive, but because of what we did last episode, I have plenty of deuterium and tritium at my disposal. I end up being really thankful that I made a big reactor for both deuterium and tritium. I guess you'll also want to smelt up some plutonium, but that's not difficult. A stack of those later, and I have my first singularity. By putting the singularity through the electrolyzer, you can create UU matter. You get one millibucket of UU matter per crafting cycle, and the singularity, as I said before, will not get consumed. This means you can just let it run perpetually. I'd put it down, let it run, and when we're done with everything else, we should have plenty to work with. You'll need a bit for crafting, but also for another machine at a later point. After that, I can begin work on the fusion reactor. It's going to take quite a while to get all of the materials together to make this thing, so I'll be having it run in the background and make all of the components while I do other things. It is very expensive, requires a whole bunch of pumps, a whole bunch of heat exchangers from those pumps, as well as tons of superconductor cable, which requires cooling cells, which requires more pumps. Did I mention you need a ton of pumps? While I am doing some waiting, how about we go and take a base tour? I never did end up finishing the design I had in mind for the main tower. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it, and that's why there have been those extra doors there this whole time. I was gonna have these, like, maintenance hallways or whatever. But that's okay, I suppose. I guess I'll also patch up whatever holes I happen to find as we move around. I did do my best, though, to patch up some of the interiors. All the walls are actually filled in again. And in the basement, I made some prettification happen, even if that just means replacing the ceiling, floor, and walls with an actual block that's not stone or dirt. Someone on the FTB Discord recommended I use diamonds and emeralds as walls just because I could, and you know what? I went with it. It kind of matches my prismarine look that I have going here. And of course, you can see all of the machines I put down along the way. I also finished that second building. I guess that one actually did get finished, unlike the first one. It's hard to make rectangles pretty, you know? I didn't really know how to cap off the arched part of that building, so I just did it and it was whatever. But yeah, I always like doing a little look at the base at the end of the game. It really gives you a showcase of how far we've come. Relatively speaking, this was also a decently short series. It only lasted about, what, a little over a month and a half of recording sessions? And even then, I took a small break in there. But I'm glad I did this series in the end. I'm sure if you've watched this far, you're happy to see it as well. A whole bunch of fusion reactor components later, 
you'll want 36 of those fusion reactor blocks. You'll need 46 total, but you get 10 from the quest. Six go into the block itself, and then 40 go into the actual structure. You'll also want to make sure you have those three stacks and change of highly advanced machine hulls at the ready. And as you would expect, a structure that has this many blocks is going to be massive, so be sure to clear out a lot of space for it. So I'll get building and I'll get back to you when it's complete. Okay, it's built, and it's time to set up all of the cables and ports and whatnot. Naturally, you'll want to pre-filter your ports, at least the output ones. The rest can just be filtered by what you're inputting with, I suppose. There are a few different options for fueling the fusion reactor. I'll be using a combination of deuterium and tritium. All the other ones just aren't really good enough. I don't have nearly enough helium-3 to constantly run off of that, though it does cost less energy in total to run the higher tier recipes. But, like I said, deuterium and tritium are doing the job just fine. Of course, I'll want the ME system hooked up to all of this, and it'll take out the excess hydrogen product. The helium plasma can honestly just stay down here. I don't really need to store it in the system. And the first thing I'll be dumping all of the plasma into is the quest that requires a thousand buckets of it anyway. Now, that being said, this fusion reactor requires an absolute ton of power to run. The base cost is 16,000 EU per tick. I'm not making nearly enough to power this thing, because it's just going to get more and more expensive the more time to craft helium plasma. Thankfully, it can basically power itself, as it's going to be producing helium plasma that's fuel for plasma turbines. By organizing things so that it goes into the task screen last, and the plasma turbines first, I can have a self-sufficient loop which generates all the energy I need to run this plasma turbine. Also, like the other turbines, they can share walls. This is going to be exceedingly important as each of these is super expensive to make. It might be easy to get raw resources, but getting all the specialized components can be very time consuming and expensive. So you'll want to abuse the adjacency properties and save tons of material that way. At this point, I'd just be running superconductor to your power for this stuff. It'll ensure that you get all the power into the fusion reactor, and it'll make helium plasma super quickly. Though I hope you have enough tritium to run this. You should have more than enough deuterium, at least. As per usual, I'll be doing other things while that runs. So, I'm going to make all of those teleportation cores needed for one of the endgame quests. This is basically just alloy spam. Make 8 stacks of the atomic alloy, and there you go. As long as you're being efficient by enriching all of your stuff before you put it in the infuser, this shouldn't be difficult at all. Alright, well that should just about do it for the first round of atomic alloys. I'm going to need another two stacks of those, as well as all of the other ones when I eventually get to the final quest that makes the replicator, but we're not at the replicator yet. You might have automated these alloys before, but I didn't even make crafting CPUs. <laughs> It's funny, really. I wasn't actively avoiding applied energistics this time, but I guess I inadvertently ended up avoiding the crafting computers anyway. Well, you've probably seen those 10 million times before. Maybe even 10 billion times. And I've heard there's a really good AE2 guide video out there that like explains everything ever about the mod. So I guess if you want AE2 information, you can just go there. Or look at wherever I talked about that stuff in my Sky's Expert series. But yeah, that's most of the quests done. We only have a few things left. Isn't that amazing? I guess I can also now claim a reward of a creative ME energy cell. This basically means that the computer system will never run out of power. A little bit late for that given that I already have plasma turbines, but you know. I can also claim a creative tank of helium, I suppose. That makes cryofluid completely free. Not that it really matters, but you know. At least the argon and the shale oil were useful. The next thing to jump on is Mechanism Supercritical Phase Shifter. I will be needing some antimatter, though it's not exactly the same as it is in regular Mechanism. You don't need to run fission and get polonium from fission reactions and all that nonsense. Well, I guess you do have to do fission, but that's MI's fission, completely unrelated. It's a fair sum of plutonium, and you'll also need some dark matter. But by this point, you should have plenty of spare EMC and plutonium, so run those things through the implosion compressor and make a whole bunch of polonium pellets. I believe you'll need 2,000 of them. But again, you probably have way more stuff than you're ever going to need, so if you overshoot that margin, you're not really costing yourself anything.
Now to craft some high density polyethylene. I only need to craft a couple of them because they have an EMC value, then I can just EMC all the rest. I guess it's like a little annoying to make this, but we have everything already. I even have some oxygen I'm not using, so this isn't a difficult part of the process at all. Then run all of that HDPE through the enrichment chamber to get all of the HDPE sheets you'll need for the supercritical phase shifter. And I mean, you should have plenty of plutonium batteries by now as well. You'll need 72 SPS casings, a whole bunch of structural glass, and then turn those casings into ports as well as making a supercharged coil. None of this is difficult at this stage, though make sure you have enough room to build the structure. It's a bunch of circles all touching each other. You can view what the requirements are for the structure in EMI, though I mean I did just say what they are, but that's useful for you for later, I guess. You'll also need a chemical oxidizer. This turns the polonium pellets into polonium gas. And that's what the SPS turns into antimatter at a rate of 1000 to 1. So effectively, it's one pellet per one millibucket of antimatter. I suppose it's now time to set all of this up. Naturally, this thing is going to be powered by the plasma turbines. Emphasis on turbines, as in more than one. I'm going to want a ton of turbines. You see, I wanted to beat this pack in under 200 hours, and I'm like barely on track to make that at this point. So if I want this to happen at any remotely decent speed, I'm going to need the turbines to make a ton of power for me. Also, something I should note is that apparently my client is bugged. I fixed it in the end, but the SPS was using twice as much power as it was supposed to. So by changing it to make it cost so much less energy, I ended up completely speeding up the process of which I was making the antimatter. Also, you get a free chemical crystallizer from a reward, so you don't have to go out of your way to make that thing. You only need two pellets. That's 2,000 millibuckets of antimatter gas. Now, four of these plasma turbines is probably enough. I end up going with six in the end, but I think four will more than do the job. It just takes a few hours, which, yeah, that is a lot, but it's also not a lot. If you have other stuff to do, it's not a lot at all. And I guess you could always make more plasma turbines, though I'm kind of scraping by with my iridium and those advanced pumps and such. At least the SPS gives you a live update of its power consumption and how much antimatter it's making at a given time. Here you can see the effects of fixing that bug. You'll notice that it's using half the power it was using before. Much better if I do say so myself. I've pretty much done everything else. I guess there are a couple of things I could do now, but it's a waiting game, more or less. Hmm, maybe we could play a game while we wait. Uh, I spy with my little eye something green. I'll, uh, I'll give you a second. You can always, uh, pause the video for this completely serious gag. Yup, it's polonium gas. But you know what else is green? Uranium. Who is uranium? Yeah, I found a way to stick this bad joke into the series after all, even though I should have done it last episode. Look, it's a dad level joke, and it's a chemistry related joke, and it's a linguistic related joke. What is there not to find hilarious about it, and how could I resist it? Time to make a quantum upgrade. This is the absolute top tier of upgrade in this mod. It lets it use a ton of extra power. Not that you really need that on your regular machines at this point. Pretty much just a requirement for making that ultimate armor. But that's okay, right? Oh, also it costs a lot of those highly advanced upgrades, so I hope you have a bunch of them stocked. Okay, we're just about done with the antimatter pellets. Then I can take those and craft them into the ultimate singularity. That would be made in the Empowerer, so I hope you still have that set up. Doesn't require a super large amount of power though. So once you wait for it to be crafted, there you go, you have the ultimate singularity. I guess it's time to make the final machine in the game, the Replicator. Of course, it'll take a little while to make it, so I'll just speed this up with the temporal pouch, and I'll get back to you when it's done. Alright, there we go. The Replicator is finished. This machine doesn't take any power, so you don't have to worry about powering it. All it requires is UU matter. It will take 100 UU matter to dupe any item in the game. I don't know if that respects MBT data or not. I think there are some blacklisted inventories or something. But we're not really after that anyway, I suppose. No, what we want to dupe is quantum upgrades. 
Yeah, I could craft more, but that's like expensive and stuff. So how about we just dupe the quantum upgrades, huh? Then I can use all of that to make the ultimate gear. An entire hallway just for one machine. So if we bring some of that UU matter over here and put the quantum upgrade in the slot, it makes another one. And it'll keep doing that. I'll need five quantum upgrades, one for each of the pieces of gear, and then an extra one to actually craft the thing in a packer. Know that you'll want to upgrade the power consumption of the packer. I noticed that a low tier hull, as in no hull, doesn't cut it. But if you put in a highly advanced hull, that should be good enough. I've hooked the thing up to the raw turbine output from downstairs with the plasma turbines, so that gives it plenty of power. This armor makes you basically immortal to any source of damage that you'll naturally find in the game. Other than maybe void damage, I don't know. Either way, you can make the whole set. The chestplate is free creative flight as opposed to powered creative flight from the gravity chestplate. The sword also does infinite damage, so you can one-shot anything you'd like. In my first world, I went to the end after making this gear and immediately killed the dragon. I didn't have to deal with the harder boss fight that then existed. Hooray for fast murder. How about we test this super amazing gear out, huh? Because this is so necessary. So if I quickly spawn an ender dragon in, I can kill it in one shot. Isn't that wonderful? I love rapid murder. In Minecraft. I guess I'm not the biggest fan of rapid murder outside of Minecraft. Unless it's in another game where you want super high damage. Well, anyway, this armor is what it is. I guess it's amazing or something. It's typical endgame armor. Man, remember when this concept was like new back when Averidia first came around in 1.7? Actually, most of you probably don't. It always feels so weird seeing all of these new players play the game I've been playing for over a decade as far as modded is concerned. No offense to any of you guys, of course. It's just weird. And then you have boomers like me who refuse to call power anything other than RF unless it explicitly is not RF. I guess in this pack it is technically RF, but it's not supposed to be. But yeah, this is the end of the mod pack, I guess. Isn't that wonderful? It's pretty great. I guess I'll quickly finish off all of those final quests that were gated by Yuyu Matter, but we're done. And yes, I did manage to beat the 200 hour mark, just barely, but I had like an hour left. Yeah, I definitely beat the speedrunner in this category. Take that, speedruns. I am the winner here. This was a fun pack to play through though. I'm glad I played it again. This is actually the first pack I played through twice. I did encounter a little bit of burnout towards the end, but what are you going to do? Oh, by the way, the cactus reward is actually a bit of an in-joke. There was a cactus duping issue early in the development of the pack, so that's why you get some cactus as your reward from the replicator. So with that, another guide series comes to a close. This has been Pick. I'm glad to have seen you, and I hope to see you again. Until next time. Or at least that's what I would say if I didn't have one last thing to go over. And this is something that's important enough to at least mention. The processing array is a multi-block. It allows you to process things in many machines at once. What I mean by that is it's a multi-block for your single block machines. You can put a whole stack of centrifuges in it and it'll run a stack of those recipes at a time. The only thing you need to make sure of is that it's the right size, you've said it's a 64 like all the other multi-size multi-blocks, and that you have more than enough outputs to handle all of the exporting. Otherwise, it just won't run properly. This definitely could have been useful earlier in the game, but I guess it's too late to go back and change that now. At least I'm covering it here. EI is good, but it has bad documentation, so I hope I've done my job in helping mitigate that at least a little bit. But yeah, that's just a little addendum here. Again, thanks for watching. You know where to find my tip documents, and you know that I'm pretty responsive to comments on my videos. See you guys.